chapter one, the geographer's world. We are going to be studying lesson one, how geographers view the world. If you're in your online textbook, you can access that information right here. Clicking go should open to what would be the exact same thing if you have your physical textbook, the first page of chapter one, lesson one. The other thing that you're going to need in front of you at this moment is your note page, which is actually going to be our homework for today as well. So while you're watching this video, you can be filling out these notes to double check your reading comprehension and make sure you understand what it is that we have discussed. And this also works as you completing your homework. So by the end of class period time today, you should be finished with this work. What I'd like you to do is make sure that you've looked at the instructions for this. Our directions say, read the lesson and use your textbook to decide if each of these statements is true or false. Write T or F in the blank. So T or F goes right here in each of these blanks. Then if a statement is false, rewrite it correctly on the line. We're going to practice that with the first two. I'll show you what those look like and then you'll have the chance to complete this on your own as our video continues. First two, geographers think spatially. Number one says, geography is the study of Earth and other planets. Number two, geographers study how places change. Let's look to see if those are true and false in this first section of our reading. Again, just for today, I'm going to show you what that listening tab feature looks like. And we're going to listen to the narrator go through the very first section, geographers think spatially, in our textbook. Right up here, the headphone tab allows you to open up and listen to our reading. Let's get started. Lesson one. How geographers view the world. It matters because thinking like a geographer helps you understand how the world works and appreciate the world's remarkable beauty and complexity. Geographers think spatially. Guiding question. What does it mean to think like a geographer? An understanding of the world is based on a combination of information from many sources. Biology is the study of how living things survive and relate to one another. History is the study of events that occur over time and how those events are connected. Geography is the study of Earth and its peoples, places, and environments. Ge the definition for our study in geography, geography is the study of Earth and its peoples, places, and environments. That sentence just so happens to conveniently answer number one for us in our notes. Number one says geography is the study of Earth and other planets. We would say false. It says other planets when we just read that it's the study of Earth and its peoples, places, and environments. So if you rewrite this sentence right on this line, you've got that completely correct. Of course, you're going to write the F right here for false and then rewrite that sentence here. Let's continue. Geographers look at people and the world in which they live mainly in terms of space and place. They study such topics as where people live on the surface of Earth, why they live there, and how they interact with each other and the physical environment. Thinking spatially. Geography then emphasizes the spatial aspects of the world. Spatial refers to Earth's features in terms of their locations, their shapes, and their relationships to one another. Physical features such as mountains and lakes can be located on a map. These features can be measured in terms of height, width, and depth. Distances and directions to other features can be determined. The human world also has spatial dimensions. Geographers study the size and shape of cities, states, and countries. They consider how close or far apart these human features are to one another. Geographers also think about the relationships between human features and physical features. But thinking spatially is more than just the study of the location or size of things. It means looking at the characteristics of Earth's features. Geographers ask what mountains in different locations are made of. They examine what kinds of fish live in different lakes. They study the layout of cities and think about how easy or difficult it is for people to move around in them. The perspective of place. Locations on Earth are made up of different combinations of physical and human characteristics. 
Physical features such as climate, landforms, and vegetation combine with human features such as population, economic activity, and land use. These combinations create what geographers call places. Places are locations on Earth that have distinctive characteristics that make them meaningful to people. The places where we live, work, and go to school are important to us. Our home is an important place. Even small places, such as our bedroom or a classroom, often have a unique and special meaning. In the same way, larger locations, such as our hometown, our country, or even Earth, are places that have meaning for people. You can see that in both the section on thinking spatially and the perspective of place, our study in geography is based on our position in the world and then getting to know more about the other parts of the world and people's position in them. Each and every one of us has probably a distinct memory or a distinct description of what their home looks like, what their city looks like, what their state or country, things that they've seen looks like. All of those perspectives come into play in how we think geographically. One way that geographers learn about places is by studying landscapes. Landscapes are portions of Earth's surface that can be viewed at one time and from one location. They can be as small as the view from the front porch of your home, or they can be as large as the view from a tall building that includes the city and surrounding countryside. Whether we visit a landscape or we look at photographs of the landscape, it can tell us much about the people who live there. Geographers look at landscapes and try to explain their unique combinations of physical and human features. As you study geography, notice the great variety in the world's landscapes. After we get through chapter one, we're going to begin studying the different landscapes of the United States. And many of you have maybe traveled to other cities, other states, and other places, and you'll be able to relate to those things. Once we get outside of the United States, however, even for Mr. Shane, it's difficult to imagine what it's like to live in certain places in the world unless you've actually been there. But we're going to use some of the skills we learn in chapter one to help us understand what those landscapes look like and then how that might affect the people that are there. The perspective of experience. Geography is not something you learn about only in school or just from books. Geography is something you experience every day. We all live in the world. We feel the change of the seasons. We hear the sounds of birds chirping and of car horns honking. We walk on sidewalks and in forests. We ride in cars along streets and highways. We shop in malls and grocery stores. We fly in airplanes to distant places. We surf the internet or watch TV and learn about peoples and events in our neighborhood, our country, and the world. This is all geography. By learning about geography in school, we can better appreciate and understand this world in which we live. A changing world. Earth is dynamic or always changing. Rivers shift course. Volcanoes suddenly erupt, forming mountains or collapsing the peaks of mountains. The pounding surf removes sand from beaches. The things that people make change too. Farmers shift from growing one crop to another. Cities grow larger. Nations expand into new areas. Geographers then study how places change over time. They try to understand what impact those changes have. What factors made a city grow? What effect did a growing city have on the people who live there? What effect did the city's growth have on nearby communities and on the land and water near it? Answering questions like these is part of the field of geography. Reading progress check. Describing. How is geography related to history? You'll notice that the beginning of the section had a focus guiding question and then it has a summary question, the reading progress check, that relates to what it is that we just talked about. Hopefully you've come to understand that this world is completely dynamic. Not only are we going to consider the spatial features of the world, what exists in the world, our experience in the world, but also how those experiences have come about to right now. We're going to look at the past, the present, and the future as we try to study and understand not only the history of a place, but the people and its culture. Now after we finish section one, you should be able to answer number two. 
Geographers study how places change. We said that because things are dynamic, meaning are always changing, we would say that number two is true. You don't have anything to write here because the answer is true. As we get into the next section, I'd like you to complete and fill this out on your own. By the end of this video, you should have that done and should be ready to complete your assignment. The five themes of geography. Guiding question. How can you make sense of a subject as large as Earth and its people? Geographers use five themes to organize information about the world. These themes help them view and understand Earth. Location. Location is where something is found on Earth. There are two types of location. Relative location describes where a place is compared to another place. This approach often uses the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. A school might be on the east side of town. Relative location can also tell us about the characteristics of a place. For example, knowing that New Orleans is near the mouth of the Mississippi River helps us understand why the city became an important trading port. Absolute location is the exact location of something. An address like 123 Main Street is an absolute location. Geographers identify the absolute location of places using a system of imaginary lines called latitude and longitude. Those lines form a grid for locating a place precisely. Lines of latitude run east to west, but they measure distance on Earth in a north to south direction. One of these lines, the equator, circles the middle of Earth. This line is equally distant from the North Pole and the South Pole. Other lines of latitude between the equator and the North and South Poles are assigned a number from 1 degree to 90 degrees. The higher the number, the farther the line is from the equator. The equator is 0 degrees latitude. The North Pole is at 90 degrees North Latitude, 90 degrees N, and the South Pole is at 90 degrees South Latitude, 90 degrees S. You can see here in this picture, the latitude lines, I like to say latitude is flat, flatitude. They run in this east-west direction, but they're measuring north and south from the equator, which is zero longitude runs in that north-south direction, but it's measuring east and west from the prime meridian that splits the Earth into two hemispheres, this way and that way. Lines of longitude run from north to south, but they measure distance on Earth in an east to west direction. They go from the North Pole to the South Pole. These lines are also called meridians. The prime meridian is the starting point for measuring longitude. It runs through Greenwich, England, and has the value of zero degrees longitude. There are 180 lines of longitude to the east of the prime meridian, and 180 lines to the west. They meet at the meridian 180 degrees, which is the international date line. Geographers use latitude and longitude to locate anything on Earth. In stating absolute location, Geographers always list latitude first. For example, the absolute location of Washington, D.C. is 38 degrees north, 77 degrees west. Place. Another theme of geography is place. The features that help define a place can be physical or human. Why is Denver called the Mile High City? Its location, one mile above sea level, gives it a special character. Why does New Orleans have the nickname the Crescent City? It is built on a crescent-shaped bend along the Mississippi River. That location has had a major impact on the city's growth and how its people live. Region. Although places are unique, two or more places can share characteristics. Places that are close to one another and share some characteristics belong to the same region. For example, Los Angeles and San Diego are located in Southern California. They have some features in common, such as nearness to the ocean. Both cities also have mostly warm temperatures throughout the year. In the case of those two cities, the region is defined using physical characteristics. Regions can also be defined by human characteristics. For instance, the countries of North Africa are part of the same region. One reason is that most of the people living in these countries follow the same religion, Islam.
Geographers study regions so they can identify the broad patterns of larger areas. They can compare and contrast the features in one region with those in another. They also examine the special features that make each place in a region distinct from the other. Region basically in our own terms of where we live right here in Milwaukee can be associated with the surrounding area. So you could say that the city of Milwaukee itself, even though it is a place, has a specific region to it because it's different from that of what is outside of Milwaukee. Milwaukee is the largest city in the state of Wisconsin, therefore it has the highest population. It's different from some of the suburban and more rural areas in other parts of the state. We are in the southeastern portion of Wisconsin, which has a different landscape than other parts of the state, such as the northern Wisconsin, which is a lot Lot more forested or western Wisconsin which has a lot more rolling hills and topography. A larger scaled region that we would associate with would be the Midwest where Wisconsin is located around those Great Lakes. Some of the other states in the Midwest would include things like Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois, Michigan, Ohio. That's considered the Midwest region in that area. Human environment interaction. People and the environment interact. That is, they affect each other. The physical characteristics of a place affect how people live. All right, eighth grade. To better understand the five themes of geography that we're looking at in terms of location, the difference between absolute location and relative location, place and region, and the different scale the region can have, I got a quick little video for you to watch that's actually going to take place on a virtual field trip. Let's go to Disney World. Way down here in Florida. Come on. A place in geography is a location on Earth that has characteristics that help define it and make it meaningful and special to people. Do you recognize the place in this photograph? It's the Magic Kingdom in Disney World, which is near Orlando, Florida. From this picture, what recognizable characteristics help you identify this place? Location is where something is found on Earth. There are two ways of describing location. Relative location compares one place with another place. Often, directions are used to describe relative location. For example, Disney World is located northwest of Miami Beach. Absolute location describes the exact location of something. An address is an exact location. Geographers use latitude and longitude to determine the absolute location of a place. Latitude and longitude lines are imaginary lines that form a grid on Earth. This grid is measured in degrees. By using these lines, geographers can identify the absolute location of the Magic Kingdom in Disney World. It is located at 28 degrees, 25 minutes, and 7 seconds north latitude and 81 degrees, 34 minutes, and 52 seconds west longitude. You have learned that a place has particular characteristics. Two or more places can share characteristics. Places that are close to one another that share characteristics belong in the same region. Regions can be small and include only a few places. They also can be quite large and include several areas or territories. The Magic Kingdom is a place within Disney World. Disney World includes several other theme parks like Epcot, Disney's Hollywood Studios, and Animal Kingdom. The entire Disney World vacation area is located in Kissimmee, Florida. Kissimmee is near Orlando. Sometimes Disney World is identified as being in Orlando because Orlando is a bigger city and more people are familiar with its name and location. Orlando is in the middle of the state. This region is called Central Florida. It is a distinct region that is located between the areas of North and South Florida. Central Florida has similar characteristics that distinguish it from other parts of Florida. For example, it has a larger amount of sinkholes than anywhere else in Florida. Western Florida borders the Gulf of Mexico. Therefore, it shares characteristics similar to other states along the Gulf. This region is known as the Gulf Coast. Other states on the Gulf Coast are Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. 
Gulf Coast states share characteristics that define this area as a region. Living in a Gulf Coast state is different from living in states in the Midwest, for example. Florida is also part of a larger region known as the South. This region includes several states. Their relative location in the southern United States means that they share characteristics that make up a region. Within the United States, there are many other distinct regions. As you can see, there are many ways to describe where a place is located on Earth. Human environment interaction. People and the environment interact. That is, they affect each other. The physical characteristics of a place affect how people live. Flat, rich, well-watered soil is good for farming. Mountains full of coal can be mined. The environment can present all kinds of hazards, such as floods, droughts, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions. People affect the environment too. They blast tunnels through mountains to build roadways and drain swamps to make farmland. Although these actions can improve life for some people, they can also harm the environment. Exhaust from cars on the roadways can pollute the air, and turning swamps into farms destroys natural ecosystems and reduces biological diversity. The environment is the natural surroundings of a place. It includes several key features. One is landforms, or the shape and nature of the land. Hills, mountains, and valleys are types of landforms. The environment also includes the presence or absence of a body of water. Cities located on coastlines like New York City have different characteristics than inland cities like Dallas. Weather and climate also play a role in how people interact with their environment. The average weather in a place over a long period of time is called its climate. Alaska's climate is marked by long, cold, wet winters and short, mild summers. Hawaii's climate is warm year-round. Alaskans interact with their environment differently in December than Hawaiians do. Another component or part of the environment is resources. These are materials that can be used to produce crops or other products. Forests are a resource because the trees can be used to build homes and furniture. Oil is a resource because it can be used as a source of energy. Basically, human environment interaction comes down to the two factors in which way in which humans affect the environment based on a lot of those different ideas of climates, the resources, the landscape, and then how we actually use those same factors and affect the environment because of our settlement and our development at the same time. Continue. Movement. Geographers also look at how people, products, ideas, and information move from one place to another. People have many reasons for moving. Some move because they find a better job. Sometimes people are forced to move because of war, famine, or religious or racial prejudice. Movement by large numbers of people can have important effects. People may face shortages of housing and other services. If new arrivals to an area cannot find jobs, poverty levels can rise. In our interconnected world, a vast number of products move from place to place. Apples from Washington State move to supermarkets in Texas. Clothes produced in Thailand end up in American shopping malls. Oil from Saudi Arabia powers cars and trucks across the United States. All this movement relies on transportation systems that use ships, railroads, airplanes, and trucks. Ideas can move at an even faster pace than people and products. Communication systems, such as telephone, television, radio, and the internet, carry ideas and information all around the Earth. Remote villagers on the island of Borneo watch American television shows and learn about life in the United States. Political protesters in Egypt use text messaging and social networking sites to coordinate their activities. The geography of movement affects us all. The six essential elements. The five themes are one way of thinking about geography. Geographers also divide the study of geography into six essential elements. Elements are the topics that make up a subject. Calling them essential means they are necessary to understanding geography. Reading progress check. 
determining central ideas. How is the theme of location related to the theme of place? If you look at the theme of location, it comes down to two factors, relative location and absolute location, where relative location describes where a place is compared to another place, as in maybe using directions of this is north of or south of, where absolute location uses that latitude longitude factor. The idea of place goes to describe what is actually in that location, the factors that make that place completely unique. Skill building, guiding question. How will studying geography help you develop skills for everyday life? Have you ever used a web browser to find a route from your home to another place? If so, your search took you to a website that provides maps. If you followed that map to your destination, you were using a geography skill. Interpreting visuals. Maps are one tool geographers use to picture the world. They use other visual images as well. These other visuals include graphs, charts, diagrams, and photographs. Graphs are visual displays of numerical information. They can help you compare information. Charts display information in columns and rows. Diagrams are drawings that use pictures to represent something in the world or an abstract idea. A diagram might show the steps in a process or the parts that make up something. Critical thinking. Geographers ask analytical questions. For example, geographers might want to know why earthquakes are more likely in some places than in others. That question looks at causes. They might ask, how does climate affect the ways people live? Such questions examine effects. Geographers might ask how the characteristics of a place have changed over time. That is a question of analysis. Or they could ask why people in different nations use their resources differently. That question calls on them to compare and contrast. Learning how to ask and answer questions like these will help sharpen your mind. In addition to understanding geography better, you will also be able to use these skills in other subjects. Reading progress check. Analyzing. How do geographers use visual? Take a look at the skills that we're working on building in geography. It's based on understanding more of the world in which we live. Now, God has called us to be stewards of this world, stewards of his creation. It makes sense for us to want to learn as much as we can about the world, its peoples, its places, so that we can best serve this world during what was called our time of grace, during our life here. If we come to a better understanding of this world and then the world that God has planned for us, the future that he has, the hope that we have in heaven, we'll come to understand a little bit better more of what we're supposed to do in this world to preach and teach the good news, to share with each and every people in the world what Jesus has done for them and the love that he has for them. I look forward to studying more about how geography can help influence the way in which we know more about the world, and then we can use that, those skills and that information to continue advance God's kingdom.